This episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, for that pizza you need. I'm heading to Tacoma this weekend and to Spokane, uh, to the comedy clubs there, and I will see you there. Let's go. Come on. go they're coming in boy and that is it Mm -mm -mm -mm. they're coming in there you go boy that's it baby crack into your cousin baby Crack in to your cousin. It is that time. It's March 12, and it's daylight savings time, man. Did you feel that? What a friggin' speed bump that is, huh? You know, you got regular life going on. Everything's chill. You know, you maybe you and the lady got a plan to do a little, you know, do a little Dirty game of close freeze tag with each other. A little freaking bang, 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 bang. And then suddenly you realize, I got one less hour of sleep coming at me. And for me, man, I, my entire world falls apart. I, everything, everything fell apart. I went and bought cigarettes. I bought one of them things of, um... You know them six, those pudding packs, them snack packs they got? I bought one of them chocolatey hitters, bruh. One of them six pack of chocolatey, um, you know, uh, jello children's snack packs. And so, dude, I'm cracking into those and, you know, blowing Winston's. And I'm just going through it all. And now I'm so angry. Here, the crazy thing was I was so angry that I'm losing, that I'm not going to get an hour of sleep that now I'm too angry to go to sleep. So I was just, oh. And then, then here's what I'll do. I'll get angry and I'll be like, oh, I'm, oh, okay, world. Okay, world, you're going to take away an hour of sleep? Guess what? I'm not going to brush my teeth tonight. That's this weird game that goes on in my head, you know? Like, okay, universe. You don't want daddy to get that extra big 60 of nighty night night? then I'm not going to brush my teeth. You'll see how I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up straight up just spraying that Grim Reaper heat right at people's eyeballs. And, but that's what, that's it, you know, like the world gives a fuck that I'm going to do that. The world doesn't care, bro. Go to bed, you idiot. But not me. Not me, man. I got to, you know, I got to, I got to get angry and get crooked. So then I'm bent out. Now I'm bent out and I'm, you know, I've smoked nine Winston's and blew through five of them kitty snackers. And now I'm a creep. Now I'm a, you know, now the neighbors are, you know, and they have these people who have a, a balcony that's kind of over from mine on the third floor and they always look down on me. And it's weird because since they do like physically look down on me, it feels like they also look down on me, you know, emotionally. And, you know, subjectively, I think. I don't know if those are the right two words to use there. But guess what? You know what I'm talking about, you know? So let's don't get each on each other's backs about all these words. But I feel like they looked down on me. And last night, man, the lady caught me, man. The lady caught me out there just leaking with emotion, just bent out, you know? Just freaking, just just heavy huffing these Winstons, these Winston cigarettes and... And, and blowing through them that chocolatey six. So yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't fare well with change, obviously. You know, up front I don't, but in the end I know it's what's best. You know, I know change is always the best, man. I know it's scary, but you know, change is scary, but it, I think it's always the best. You know, I was thinking about, because, you know, this morning I got up, I didn't even get up till probably 11.30, you know, because I didn't even get to bed till probably 3.40, you know, in sheer fury, 
and I didn't brush my teeth. You know, even though it just affects me when I do that shit, but whatever, bro. You know, so anyway, I was bent out. I made it into the day. And then I started remembering, I remember back when I was young, they had, you know, I used to live with a family when I was young. And the daddy got, I lived with a couple of families, and one of them, the daddy got, um, you know, he'd wake up in the middle of the night and eat Tostitos chips and do some adult masturbation on the computer. And that's when families usually just had a family computer, remember? And sometimes I'd go out there and try to sneak out there to get a snack, you know, because the family computer was out there in the kitchen, in the, you know, kitchen, and it was a, they had a, they had a, you know, uh, a comfortable home, and they had, you know, a family computer out there that was kind of in this, you know, big room near the kitchen, and the daddy be over there, you know, breaking himself down, you know, just treating himself like a real, like a champ, you know, just patting himself on the, just patting his penis on the back, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I would try, but I would want that snack, you know, cause when you wake up at night, there's very little, if you want a snack, and once you get that word snack in your head, there's very little that will suffice. It's like, you gotta have that snack. And you think, oh, I could just have two glasses of water and try to trick my stomach. But no, but if you, but if you lay awake like another two or three minutes, it is snack only. And so that's where I was. I was in snack fucking only mode. And so now I got to get a snack, right? And I remember going out there and the daddy sometime would be out there, you know, and he'd be doing self-pleasure. And look, I'm not, not, I don't think that's crazy. You know, a lot of people, I mean, I think it's crazy if he, you know, if, if a man, if an adult is to go towards children masturbating, you know, if somebody comes at running at me and they're, and they're jerking off at the same time, I'm going to fucking kick him in the neck, dude. Okay? I'm going to chop him down. And I got an axe, bro. I'm about to cherry tree that cat like the first president, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm chopping him down. If somebody comes running at me and is masturbating at the same time, they're out. Even though also I do feel like now that I mention that, that should be an Asian Olympic sport. You telling me. Okay, be honest. And it doesn't even have to be Asian, but this is something that, that would start off probably in Japan jerking off running and jerking off at the same time right you got to hit the finish line and bust out i mean that is if that ain't the next bellator you know if they don't if they don't expand into a new realm i mean that's the new professional bull riding right there doing that but uh but anyhow what i was saying was that so then it would be this crazy game i had to sneak over to the fridge and get in that fridge without getting the, making the dad turn his back because he was on the internet on early pornography. You know, he, this was early pornography. This is when, you know, shit was loading and you had to relax and, you know, he'd have some Tostitos and a little bit of salsa out there. And it, so he's just hitting, you know, he's taking each, each one of these Tostitos and just mobbing into that salsa. And then he's just grilling, you know. And the whole time I'm fucking like kind of crawling towards him because if, if he looks across the room, he can't see me because there are counters. But if I stand up, he can see me get in the fridge. So I'm just like elbow crawling through the freaking kitchen. You know, I'm just elbow crawling through the kitchen like a real sneak. And he would be over there on here, you know, a page would be loading because that's when he'd hit them chips. So he's just, you know, he's mobbing into these tostites. And I'm, you know, and I'm just, uh, just elbow crawling towards that refrigerator. And him eating the tostitos are making me so much hungrier. Oh my God, every one he put into his mouth was just making me hungry. And also knowing that there was pornography on the computer was making me, you know, feel kind of flush in my, in my crotch. So, I mean, I'm going through a lot and all I wanted was a snack. Like originally when I left the room, they let me stay in a bedroom at their home. When I left the room, I was chill. But once I hit the kitchen, I saw the glow of that computer in the distance. You know, I knew daddy was over there popping. Then that, that means I had to, you know, get, I had to sneak up to the fridge. Now, some of you guys are already wondering, well, once you hit the fridge, you're going to open the door and the light's going to come out. He's going to see the light. You're right. You're right. But I see. But here's the thing about some fridges. Some fridges, um, 
they have a, if you open the door a little bit, you can sneak your hand in there and push that little lever. Because there's a little lever that the door pushes against, and that's what turns the light on and off. It's just a lever. You know, uh, just like a push lever. And so, when that door, if you if you're careful and you slowly move the door up, you can get your hand up there to hold that lever and keep the light out. So that was my saving grace, man. So I'm fucking, you know, I got that door open just a touch. I hit that thing. I hit the lever. I'm safe from the light. I got that door open. And then I hear the chips stop. And I'm like, fuck. You know? But then I hear the chips kind of start up again. And I'm like, oh, must have been an ad popped up, you know, that he had to close or something. So now, man, I'm getting, I'm getting more and more robust, you know, thinking about the crotch, you know, because I'm thinking about pornography. And when you're young and you're, you know, this was high school. Excuse me, I'm having a little coffee, if you hear me. But in high school, man, if you start thinking about pornography, I mean, your dick turns into a dang rudder. I mean, this thing, I could have, I mean, I could have dragged this thing through the dirt and, and, uh, and you know, hoed 100 yards of field. I mean, this thing was, I could have tilled soil with, the, with this rudder I was jacking back then, you know, because I was dick heavy back then. And, and anyhow, so I get my, I, now I'm kind of in the fridge, but it's dark, you know, it's kind of dark on that side of the, um, of that side of the, of this room, this big room, because it's the kitchen and then it goes out into the dining room. It's all one big open space. You know, these people had a little bit of cash on them. And so now I'm trying to get in that refrigerator, you know, and that, but the thing is, these people had a little bit of money. And when you got a little bit of money, if you ever been in a rich person's refrigerator, they ain't got shit. Here's what they got. They got a little thing of like summer sausage, fancy summer sausage from somewhere, Italy or somewhere else. They have olives, bruh, six or seven jars of olives. They had a, um, I remember they had a wine opener in the fridge, but no wine in there. Like, what the fuck, dude? You got to have money if you keep an opener in the fridge. What else? They had some fancy cheese on a board, but that kind of cheese that if you're from where I'm from, you don't eat, you don't eat that kind of cheese. You know, that cheese feels like a trap the second you taste it. It feels like you're sucking on the, uh, it feels like you're sucking on the, the, it feel like you're sucking on a, the tit of like somebody who, somebody's body is full of uh, science experiments. That's what it feels like if you eat some of them fancy cheese. You know, Brigadier and um, what else? They had um, Jolie, diff different kind of cheeses, um, you know, rare cheddar. And so anyway, I'm fucking rightful, you know, trying to get this shit, dude. And then I hear the daddy starts, you know. He starts chirping on himself, and I'm trying not to hear this shit, man, because I don't mind. Look, look, man, yes, the man was older than me. That's fine, but we're still men. You know what I'm saying? I, I, at that point, I'm, I masturbate as well, so it's not like, you know, I don't know the mean streets of, 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 of you know, of body sounds. You know what I'm saying? I've been out there. So, but I'm trying to fucking get, I'm trying to fill my belly, dude, and you have no idea, man, how hard it is to fucking... Bro, I had a mouthful of olives, right? And this dude starts getting into it. And it's so hard to eat olives, bro, while somebody else is, um, you know, while somebody else is jerking off. And it's, uh, and, and I just remember having that. What else? I had some, they would have asparagus in there, but they always had it under this foil. They had like one of them glassware a big casserole dish and then foil and it was just asparagus. So that foil, man, even though you don't think it makes a loud noise, when it's the only noise in town in the middle of the night, it's loud. So you got to carefully lift that foil and then ease your hand in that pan and get you one of them uh, asparagi, you know, one of them. And then you got to slurp that sucker, dude. So now I remember at one point I had two asparagus in my mouth and this dude's across the room. You know, just, you know, working that inverse ice, you know, working that, you know, working that iceberg, bro, working that meaty iceberg. And I, I mean, it's hard to eat asparagus while somebody is also masturbating in the distance. And so it was, uh, but what I wanted to get at, man, sorry, I went off on a tangent. What I was trying to get at here was 
There were times at that home, these people had a nice home, and they had a lot of windows and stuff around that whole area, and they didn't really have neighbors at the time. So, And the windows looked out onto, um, you know, kind of marshlands and stuff, and it was very beautiful. And I remember at times in that home, uh, I would get up in the morning after, um, you know, after the daylight, after we set the clocks back or whatever, and I would see how bright it was in the morning. And this is so the, the time that we do it in the winter in September or whatever. And I would say it was the first time that I noticed daylight savings time. That's what I'm trying to say is that I remember the first time that I ever noticed daylight savings time. I mean, I remember it when I was a kid. I remember saying, you know, we set the clocks, and the, but I never really understood kind of how it worked. And then there was one, you know, a beautiful morning, uh, not that morning when I was out there trying to get something to eat, but when I was staying, uh, living with the same people, there was a, there was a beautiful morning where I walked out um, and, uh, and the, and the, the, you know, the, just the, it was so bright and it was so early. It was like 6 a.m. and it was, and it was bright and it was, you could see all the marsh and, you, you know, see all these um, egrets and all these beautiful birds and, um, I mean, you could even see probably a gator in the distance just creeping along the water out there. And, uh, and I remember being like, wow, it's bright really early. And I remember the, that, the, that the dad had told me, yeah, well, this, you know, daylight savings time just happened. And so when it switches, you know, you can really get a feel for the morning out here. And, um, and I remember that just being the first time that I noticed daylight savings time. You know, just noticed how, you know, sometimes you get a bigger dose of the morning. And then uh, the rest of the year, you get a bigger dose of the evening. And so now we get a bigger dose of the evening. And I know, uh, and I know it's awesome, especially like in the Midwest and stuff, you get, you know, there's nothing nicer than when it kind of cools off in the Midwest and it's just starting to, um, you know, you can sit outside on the porch or outside in your yard and you can see the fireflies and, uh, you know, the kids are running around and you got the, fi- you know, chasing the fireflies and you can start to hear the, you know, you could hear Mother Nature just chirping. She got all those insects and all those night critters that start chirping in the distance. And there's nothing I remember that was more fun, you know, being young or being a kid or even living in Louisiana when um, when it would be just cool enough to sit outside or just not hot enough and you could sit outside in that extra hour of sunlight. And I remember those being usually really special times that you got to spend with your um, with your family or with your friends. Or it just, there was something comfortable about those times, you know, when the work was over and people got to enjoy each other's company. And I really, really, uh, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed those times. Um, But happy daylight saving time. Do you know it's daylight saving time? Do you know that? Well, you should know that. And you do now. And actually, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information on it because I looked it up. I was like, why did this happen? You know, this really is a crazy thing. You know, to just all of a sudden just switch everything for an hour. And I know I always knew that, you know, um, there were, you know, there were times when farming and for farming communities, it's better because you can work later in the day. And, you know, I used to farm. I used to, um, I used to work on a soybean, corn, uh, cotton, milo farm uh, outside of Vidalia, Louisiana. And... Um, across the river, across the Mississippi River from Natchez, over there in the Mississippi Delta. Or not in the Delta, but in a Delta off of the levee. And um, and so, man, I remember when it was, you know, summer, you know, riding along the levee and being able to see the sunset. And like, um, I don't know, man. I just remember, I always, always, always really loved that time. And I remember, you know, uh, that that would give us extra time in the day to, you know, run spray rigs or fertilizer rigs and to take care of just whatever needed to be taken care of, man. And I started out as a farm hand and then I worked, um, they had a migrant worker, I guess, uh, and we shared a room for a while, a Latino gentleman, and and it was fun, man. You know, I really, really enjoyed my time there and that was in Natchez, Mississippi or outside of there. But that's daylight savings time and uh, saving time, sorry. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. Daylight saving time. While Germany and Austria were the first countries to use DST in 1916, is a little known fact that a few hundred Canadians beat the German Empire by eight years. On July 1st, 1908, 
the residents of Port Arthur, Ontario, what is today popularly, popularly referred to as Thunder Bay, turned their clocks forward by one hour to start the world's first daylight saving time period. Other locations in Canada soon followed suit. However, the idea did not catch on globally until Germany introduced daylight savings time in 1916. Clocks in the German Empire and in its ally Austria were turned ahead by one hour on April 30th, 1916, two years into World War I. The rationale was to minimize the use of artificial lighting to save fuel for the war effort. Within a few weeks, the idea was followed by the United Kingdom and France and many other countries. Most of them reverted to standard time after World War I, and it wasn't until the next World War that daylight savings time made its return in most of Europe. So that's some history about daylight saving time. You know, it's wild the things that war will make you do. I mean, war made those people think, man, we have to conserve whatever it is, you know, our fuel for lanterns. You know, I don't think they had electricity then. I don't know. Do you know? So, you know, if they had electricity, they had to shut it down. But that's the reason why. That's what it says right there. And that's just, you know, that could be real. That could not be real. But that's a little more information. What else, man? Um, the song on the come in, that was by Brad Le uh, Levine. And uh, and he's a fan of the podcast, and he made that hit, man. And that's a beautiful. I'm gonna I'm drop back into that thing for one more second. That really is a nice rift. Let's get it. It's March 12th. That gets that hype, man. That gets that hype. Thank you guys for being uh, here with me on this past weekend. Thank you guys for the support. Uh, remember to subscribe on YouTube. We're almost at 30,000, which means uh, at 30,000 subscribers, I have to, I'm going to put up, I don't have to, but I am, well, I said I would, so I'm going to put up a new uh, stand-up comedy clip that's not up there. So, and you know, sometimes if you wonder why a lot of comedians don't put up extra clips, it's because... You know, you want to save some of that material for when you go to see people live and for if you get offered a comedy special. Um, and a lot of people ask, uh, why, you know, Theo, you're not, you haven't done another special. Not because I don't want to. You know, I just haven't been offered one. Um, you know, it's a tough business out here. It's a tough business. And, uh, and that's what it is. You know, I knew it was tough whenever I got into it. I didn't know that it was like this. You know, I do feel sometimes... Um, I feel, you know, I started to feel, especially like after, like in the past two years, I started to feel that, you know, that Hollywood doesn't want any real Southern white people, you know, um, and, and some of that, you know, could just be, well, you know, those are just your thoughts and your ideas. But then a lot of times you see that proof out there. You know, there hasn't been there hasn't been a southern white person on network television in 20 years. I can't even name a popular, you know, Blake Shelton is like the only southerner I think that's even really on television. Dude, can you imagine like right now, because I know the Academy Awards, the ratings were like the lowest ever. Uh, from what I've heard anyway, I don't know if, you know, a lot of the news stuff is true, but the, anyway, that's what I heard. So if that, if that's true, then I'm at, like, and Blake Shelton is the only thing that Pete, like, you know, Hollywood feels like, you know, we, oh, we can go to him. You know, can you imagine how many offers Blake Shelton is getting right now? It has to be unbelievable. Uh, mark my words right now, Blake Shelton will be hosting one of the huge award shows next year. I'm just going to put it out there. I think that's what's going to happen. Because, you know, money isn't loyal. You know, and, and you know, money, when, when, when it starts to affect their advertising, you know, then Hollywood, you think, will make some changes. Um, but, yeah, I feel like it's tough for me sometimes out here uh, just because it's like they don't, you know, I just wish they would have told me when I was young. And you start having dreams that you want to go to Los Angeles and you want to chase your dreams. And, you know, they say, come here and everybody's welcome. 
And, you know, this is a place about, you know, love and about, you know, equality and inclusion. And then I get here and a lot of times I feel like, you know, that, that that's not the case really. You know, especially recently. I guess, you know, a lot of, you know, people just get so divided politically and there's not that many people out here like me. So I think, you know, you just, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I, you know, I was talking to Joey Diaz about it and he said, you just got to work harder. You know, you just got to work harder. And, and, you know, I was so grateful to hear him say that. If you, and if you don't listen to Joey Diaz, it's Joey Coco Diaz and he is, uh, he's one of a kind. And he's a real soothsayer, and he's just a, uh, he's just a special, he's a special person. He's a conduit. And some people are conduits, you know, and they are just kind of pathways of, uh, of good energy. And he's one of those people. But he said, man, you just, you know, they're going to make you work harder for it. And so, you know, whether they, you know, whether Hollywood, you know, because, uh, look, Hollywood does not pick the most entertaining people anymore. Hollywood picks, you know, I don't know what, the, I have no idea how they choose a lot of the, make a lot of the choices they make. Because they're just so disconnected, it seems like, from what's just entertaining. Um, but with that said, you know, I can have that point of view and still be out here. And, you know, and that's why we start this past weekend. And that's why we start the channels. And that's why we do our own thing. You know, to be free from those binds. You know, be free from, you know, the man. You know, and I'm sure it's the same reason why a lot of you guys have started your own business or if you're, you know, if you're, you know, if you're working for someone else right now, you have dreams down the road of doing your own thing just for that freedom, you know, for that peace of mind, you know, and that's, uh, and, you know, and I guess I should just be grateful because, I mean, I'm grateful to at least be able to work around some of the people that, you know, that I, you know, that I really admire and I'm grateful that. You know, some there are people in my circle of friends who are heroes of mine, which is pretty unique. You know, um, but it's but one thing I did start to think, man, this is a, this was a real thought that I had was, so I started to feel like, wow, because of where I'm from, you know, because I mean, look, it's no it's no lie that Hollywood has just, to me, it feels like really rejected anybody from like a rural community. Um, or seems to, you know, they just make us all like we're, uh, you know, all racist or all, it's like they have nobody to blame anymore. So it's like, oh, well, let's just blame poor white people. You know, we can make fun of them for how they sound or because they're rate, you know, uh, we can say that they're all racist or they're all ignorant. Uh, and that shit makes me mad, man. It really does. It makes me mad. Cause I would never do that to somebody, you know, and to be a, a, a you know, a, a place where people say like, come out here and live your dreams and like equality and, you know, like all of this stuff. And then you get here and you feel that. And that, some of that's real because I feel it. You know, I feel people like, oh, this fuck. If this guy succeeds, it breaks our whole idea of what we think works, you know, or what we think the world is like. So, but you know what it made me think, man, this is real is that I was well thinking, wow. And look, some of this is like, you know, I don't think this all the time. And I have a ton of moments where I'm like, fuck it, let's go. I'm doing my shit no matter what. But I also, this is a place where I, you know, that I have to, I have to recognize and rationalize sometimes. And even if it's, and, and there's a, there could be a reality that's not a true, but it's still a, a fear that pops into my head. So I still have to work through that fear so I can be comfortable here and continue to do my work. But it made me think, wow, because of where I'm from or because of how I sound or because of how I look, you know, I can't get work or I'm not welcome into certain circles. And then it made me think, man, that must be what a lot of um, diverse entertainers, black, Latino entertainers have felt like for a while. You know that? I mean, it just it, it immediately is just like, holy shit, man, this is what that feels like. That because of the way you look or the way you sound or the way, you know, the way you, you know, or where you're from, that you're not welcome, that you aren't part of the plan. You know, it feels like, uh, you know, Hollywood, sometimes it feels like they just wish people like me would just die off. 
you know, or people who like me who they think I am. But most of the people that I grew up around were good people, you know, and they weren't racist and they weren't ignorant. You know, maybe they didn't go to some fancy school, but they weren't ignorant people. You're like, yeah, there's some fucking straight up Muppets out there, no doubt. But there was a lot of really good people as well. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off into that in, into that boneyard, man, but that's some of the struggle that I have, you know, uh, or that I fear, you know, and that could just be a fear. You know, that's sometimes, that's a scary thing about our brains. It's like it can create such real fears that we don't know if it's a fear or if it's real. That's the dark arts, isn't it? It really is, huh? You know, I ask you guys who listens to the show, and I got a call right here from a young lady that listens, so I just wanted to uh, I wanted to put her up right now. Let's see if we can catch in. Thank you. Hey, Theo. I was just giving you a call, letting you know who's out here listening to this past weekend. Ooh, okay. And I'm going to do this like a wine. You ever, um, you know when you get a wine and they like spin it around your nose, there's always some dude dressed in a tuxedo that kind of twirls it around your nose? You know, and I'm not going to say that that guy, you know, probably prefers the company of men or, but he, that guy might be kind of wild, you know, but, um, you know, or that guy, it's a guy who seems like he wanted to be a librarian, but didn't get the job. You know what I'm talking about? That's a better way to say it. But, uh, I'm going to try this with a voice. I'm going to be like a sommelier of voices. Um, and a sommelier is someone who, you know, uh, can taste wine and kind of tell you more about it. Podcast. Okay. And I've been listening for a while now. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with a third, I'm going to go with a 29 year old blonde, um, well breasted, well, well chested, like a red robin, you know, you ever see that, that red robin in your yard and you're like, damn, that thing shows up around Thanksgiving, around November, you're like, damn. And uh, it only has kind of one big chest, but it, you know, that's in, in bird country, that's titties, you know, that's beautiful. But um, I'm going to say well-breasted, I'm going to say around 29, and I'm going to say blonde. Uh, okay, that's my just guess. Here we go. I'm up here in Northern California, Humboldt County, um, stay-at-home mom, and also grow a little bit of indoor marijuana. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, boy. Man, that turned me on a little bit, did he? I, suddenly, I'm crawling for the chips again, you know what I'm saying? Suddenly, I'm elbow crawling with that rudder heading for those Tostitos. Uh, carry on, young lady. So, yeah, enjoy the podcast. Think you're funny as hell. Enjoy all the stand-ups and uh, also your CDs. And a little tidbit of information, I'm pretty sure that your birthday is the day before mine, so happy almost birthday, bringing in spring. Oh, thank you for that, young lady. That's very sweet of you. So she's a stay-at-home mom who also grows a little bit of weed, and that's somebody who listens to uh, this past weekend. And that's true, my birthday is coming up on March 19th. Uh, March 19th, I was born, and I was, um, you know, I was a large baby. And so your birthday, you said the day before... So yours is the 20th. Well, happy early birthday to you uh, as well. Yeah, I was a, you know, and I had a, um, I had a small rib cage. I remember the doctor told my mother that he, that I had a rib cage of a large cat. And he told her that right out of the gate. And so, you know, there was a lot of fear around me when I was young, I think, that maybe that I wouldn't develop fully. But I've come a long way. But thank you very much for that call right there and for checking in with us. We also had a gentleman last week that called in about, cre uh, he worked at a crematorium. He said that he was a listener of this past weekend. And, uh, and I had asked him a few facts about crematoriums. And, and a, crema a cremator is someone who basically, I mean, it's that barbecue. It's that, you know, it's that, it's that, uh, it's that chef. It's that death chef. So that cremator, man, that's that death, that, that, that's that death chef. And he grills you up. He grills you up and serves you to the Lord. So he, he said he would call back with a couple of facts about working at a crematorium. And I want to hear those right now. Here we go. What up, Theo? It's Hot Dog again. And, uh, I got three interesting facts about cremation for you. Thank you very much, Hot Dog. And Hot Dog is a nickname for this man. That's not his legal name. More? The first one being if you're a donor meaning like uh, you got one of them pink dots on your license. When you die, they basically suck 
everything out of you. And when I get you, you're basically... Damn, boy, they get that hitter out of you, huh? More? Basically like a meat bag. It's like a sleeve, like a human sleeve. No bones, no organs, nothing like that. It's a pretty gnarly thing to see. It's like a, it's like a human leather bag. Damn, boy. You like that, uh, like that, like that human Vuitton, huh? You that human leather bag. That sounds kind of wild. And then what? Tell me more. Real intense. Uh, second fact, I pretty much break, um, every bone in the human body every day. Damn, bruh. Man, you're killing me here, dude. I was just here. I just had a, you know, a night, you know, I just had that wild feeling going. I had that free blood flow from your girl that called in. That stay-at-home mom who's over there baking brownies, you know what I'm saying? You break every bone in the body more? It's kind of not really to think about. I like to tell people that when they ask me if I ever broken a bone. You know, I see uh, all kinds of broken bones, broken skulls, ribs, fingers, you know, you name it. I break it. And then uh, probably the gnarliest thing I see uh, is like, um, it's real unfortunate, but when people have miscarriages, you know, sometimes they... They want them cremated and everything like that, and that is one Tupperware container. You don't. Oh, come on, guy. Jeepers, man. Whoo. That's a to-go box for the Lord you're talking about, man. And I'm sorry, guys. Look, I, I did not hear these calls in advance, so I uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was going to be in there, and I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry I didn't know that that was in there. And I would take it out, but I'm not going to take it out uh, because, you know, sometimes things happen. And, you know, and, and no offense to you, hot dog, you know, but, you know, and I, I mean, we're just clowning around here. But, yeah, that's a heavy thing. You know, that's a heavy thing. People don't want to think about that right now. Um, you know, we're trying to celebrate living out here. And this dude's making to-go boxes out of, out of, you know, out of the Lord's little ones. But, you know, I believe if something, you know, bad happens to a child that they immediately come back somewhere, you know, as another child. Um, I don't think God holds... Uh, you know, kids uh, accountable the same way that he does an, uh, an adult, you know, uh, accountable to certain afterlifes or something like that. And some people can say, oh, that's, that's crazy, Theo, and that, I disagree with that, and I don't even believe in, that's fine. You don't have to believe in any of that shit, bro. But I believe, I believe in any, I, I, anything's possible for me. Because here's the thing, I showed up here. People are like, so you're telling me you think you could show up in a magical world a heaven where there's, you know, everybody's eating, uh, you know, candy and jumping rope, you know, and everybody's, you know, putting on, you know, uh, you know, skin softener and feeling nice. Yeah, dude, I showed up here in the middle of fucking nowhere. As Joe Rogan puts it on the middle, in the middle of a ball, on a ball of dirt in the middle of nowhere, floating through the galaxy. So if this is possible, anything is possible. That's how I look at it. The only proof I have is the experience that I have. And this experience that I would show up out here where there's all kinds of stuff. There's electricity. There's shovels. There's wiggas. You know, there's people who, you know, there's people who are nearsighted, people who are farsighted, people who can juggle, people doing backflips, people who are afraid to swim. There's shooting stars. There's lava. There's cats, dude. There's fucking cats, you idiot. There's snails. There's fruit on trees that just falls off and dies and nobody ever sees it or eats it sometimes. Yeah, I think anything could happen, man. I really think that anything could happen. But uh, but I do appreciate the other facts, man. That's how they do you for the Lord, bro. They hollow you out. This dude's breaking people's bones. Man, you got to be heat, man. What kind of guy do you have to be? I bet you'd kill it in the UFC, bro, if you were in all of that. In that MMA game, bro. Hot dog, the cremator. You know, one thing that always upset me was that if you if you if you pass away, there's only a couple ways that they that they cremate, that they, you know, you can be cremated or buried. And that shit seems weak. You know what I'm saying? I want other options, bro. I would like to be filled with fucking chocolate cream. You know? Or I'd like it just if one of my hands was straight out like it with a peace sign on it. You know, real young Japanese girl style. Or I think it'd be great if they fucking bacon, you could be bacon wrapped. You know, or served all gratin. They just put you up in that casket but with those fucking cheesy patats around you. 
I just think that, you know, cremation and burial, the only two ways we can do death these days, bitch, bedazzle me. Okay? I want fucking sequined up neck. I want that chin, bro. I want somebody to fucking sharpen my chin. People at the funeral were like, damn, he got a fucking sharp chin. Or put a little bottle cap opener under my chin. So people have to come over there. If they want a beer, fine. You're going to get a beer for free at my funeral. But if you want to drink it, you got to come over there and spend time with Papa. You know what I'm saying? I just wish there were other options than just the same old option. Cremation or burial. It's just we live in too high tech of a time and too advanced and too artistic of a world for those to be the only two options. Just cremate me. Go cremate your fucking daddy, bro. Your cousin. I don't, fuck that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I want to be blackened, you know? I want to be broiled, bro. You know, I want that, uh, I want that, uh, I want that, uh, uh, almondine on me. You know, I want to be rolled in Planko chips and fucking put out there for the Lord. Gang. Oh, but thanks for calling, man, and thanks for that information. You know, I didn't know some of that. You know, I didn't know some of that. You know, when I was young, I remember, um, I remember the first funeral that I ever went to. I had a good friend. When I was young and his brother passed away. His brother was driving in a car and he was in a car accident. And uh, and he passed away, man. And that shit shook me to the core. I remember being at the funeral and I'd never, you know, I'd never put it together like how it worked. That people could, you know, go or people could pass. I'd never... So here's what it was. I'd never seen how it affected a family. And I went to this funeral and it just, it was heavy right there. You know, and I remember waiting in line. Everybody's waiting. I'm like, what are people waiting in line for? And then as we got closer, I realized we're going to see the parents. And this was one of my, I mean, this was one of my best friends when I was a kid. This was, one, this was his parents. And I remember this as I got closer and closer to his parents just feeling. Uh, and they were the nicest they were the nicest parents of any of my friends. And they uh, they were, you know, devout church going, you know, devout, um, kind, family first. Uh, and I, you know, it just broke. I just remember bawling, crying, and just like hugging them, you know. And I just... I remember just just asking him why this happened. And it just, you know, I didn't, and my, you know, my family didn't even go with me. My mother didn't even go with me or anything like that. And maybe she asked me if I wanted her to come, and maybe I said no, you know, I don't know. Maybe she wasn't supposed to come with me, but I don't know. If I ever have a 12-year-old kid, man, or 14 or whatever, and he's going to a, a service, I'm going to go with him. I know that. And I don't hold that against my mother, you know, but she just, you know, it was always things like that that were just wild and big and important. And I always was, our family was never connected for him. You know, that was the kind of shit. It was like you had to go out there and just, it was just the emotional streets I was in a lot of times I felt like. Like, fuck, all these feelings and all this uncertainty and I don't even know what to do. And there's my buddy's brother just laying there. And he was handsome, dude. I'm not going to lie. My brother, my buddy's brother was f fucking fine as fuck, dude. You know, low key, bro. He was like the best looking dude around. And even he looked good when he left for the Lord, you know. They had him in a nice suit, probably a suit they got from a another town, a nearby town where they had better, you know, better suit artisans and better stitchers and better, you know, textiles. Because I didn't grow up in textile country, all right? And I remember we had our biggest things in our town, turpentine, birds. You could fucking get a bird, dude. You wanted a free bird? Get one, bitch. They're out there. And other things in our town was they had, um, it was supposed to be the world's longest slide. Some man had just taken a bunch of regular slides and put them together. And some kid fucking cut his leg open on it and it wasn't. I don't know if it was ever documented or not, but it was shady as fuck, dude. That thing was a piece of shit. And then what else did we have? Lee Harvey Oswald went to our middle school. Um, Pistol Pete Maravich, his sons lived in my in my uh, in my town. Oh, what else? That was it, really. 
you know, that was really it of our town. But but I just remember that uh, that was just heartbreaking. That was like the first funeral I ever went to. So I didn't mean to get into this, man. I didn't know I was going to talk about this. You know, and it's springtime. And uh, it's springtime. And so, you, you know, we're just thinking about new things. And, and here I am just um, reminiscing about the past. But, yeah, you know, anything's possible now. You know, I guess spring is like a thing of rebirth. So, you know, it's okay, I guess, that we're talking about this because, you know, if you believe in being, you know, reincarnation or being reborn into like another, you know, more comfortable place after this, I believe it. I believe, I believe in something. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to stop. I ain't, you, you think you're just going to shut me down here on earth? I'll see you in the future, Cat Daddy. You ain't shutting me down here on earth, bruh. I'm about to hit all nine of these planets, dude. I'm about to hit, I'll fucking live on a moon, bruh. I'll, I'll, I'll show up on a moon. I'm about to live everywhere. So you can catch me on that reincarnation, on that rebirth bus. You can catch me in heaven one, heaven two, heaven three, heaven four. I'll be out there. Because I'm not stopping, baby. You know, I didn't come this far to stay where I am. You know that. What else, man? I want to tell you this, man. I, you know, there's a gentleman uh, with this company, and it's called Laughable. And he's this is not this is not a promotion for uh, this is not he didn't pay me for this. And but I just want to say that it's a great app. It's a great app to stay in touch with good comedians. If you haven't already downloaded the Laughable app, go get it right now. Just say, "Hey Siri, download Laughable." It takes five seconds, or just search for Laughable in the App Store. It's the best rated podcast app for the iPhone by far. You can search for me or any other comedian and find all the podcasts they've been on as a host or as a guest. So give Laughable a shot. They just they, they got good people over there and they, you know, I touch base with them and they give me some guidance and thoughts and stuff and uh and they got good people. So check in with Laughable, man. What else is going on? I'll tell you this in the news I saw Bruno Mars. They're saying he's you know, cultural appropriation that he's kind of playing up like, you know, that he leads people to believe, I guess, that he's African-American and that he's not. And well, first of all, he leads people to believe he's a planet. His last name is Mars. So I ain't buying that that shit. So why? I mean, who cares? I never, you know, I, I definitely figured he was authentic. I also figured he could have been, you know, a short white dude in a lot of makeup. I don't give a fuck, man. You know, when you really think about the whole world's culturally appropriated, everything, we all using something. Uh, We're all out here freelancing. Some of this cultural appropriation shit, I'm like, and dude, if you want to call out anybody for cultural cultural appropriation, call out Hollywood. They've been making dimes off of cats for that. that, They, I mean, come on. Dude, if you look back on some of these contracts, boy, every color. Of skin has been taken advantage of. And if you want to, and, and, and the further you go down the skin tone line, I'm sure the worse the contracts have been over the years. I bet if you were to look at that, you know, my black friends, some of my black friends were begging to get on the Oscars two years ago or awards. Remember that? So, you know, but then, this, you know, I don't know. If we can't go back in time with a time machine, then we can't really adjust the past. So until we get fucking time travel, we need to work with solution. Everybody talking about this shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. Fuck it. I shouldn't have brought it up. Bruno Mars. I like Bruno Mars, dude. You know, Bruno Mars to me seems like sexually, am, am, you know, homogen. Uh, no, ambiguous, ambidextrous. You know what I'm saying? He seemed like the kind of dude that would just tie his dick around his own body and put it in his butt. You know, he's got that, well, he's everything. He's like that. You know, he might also have a vagina in each pocket. You know, he's like, he seemed like that kind of guy. I like Bruno Mars. That guy's entertaining as hell. What else, man? I guess, oh, I remember when I was young, people in my town for daylight saving time, people, some people didn't know what it was. You know, in my neighborhood, bro, they had some real, they had people fucking, you know, definitely a lot of people sharing ideas. Like, if you wanted an idea, you better go down the street and borrow it from somebody. You know, a lot of people weren't coming up with their own thoughts in my neighborhood. And I remember this one dude, Furious, bro. He might have been on some uppers. He might have been drinking out of a out of a car battery. I don't know. 
you know, because they had these dudes for a while that would empty out a car battery and then they would put a beer in there and then drink it out of the battery. So you get a little bit of that, that hit of that battery acid with also with your beverage. You know, and these people were just, you know, they were just losing steam, man. They were just starting to fall off the bone, you know, because something was getting wrong with them because of some of that battery acid. And this one dude, I remember Daylight Savings Time came outside, shotgun, just started shooting at the sun. You know, fuck this, fuck this. Shooting at the sun, dude, furious, bro. Couldn't figure it out, you know, saying he'd been cheated and all this shit. So you never know. You never know what you're going to get out there, man. I mean, you know, and I told him, I said, straight up, man, everybody loses the hour. That ain't just you, boy. You know, you get off your own ego because everybody loses the damn hour. It's not like you're fucking living in the future all of a sudden or in the past. You fucking muppet. Get it together. Everybody loses the hour. I want to tell you guys I'll be in Tacoma this weekend at that Tacoma Comedy Club. And that's March 15th and 16th. March 17th, I'll be at the Spokane Spokane Comedy Club. Uh, Levity Live has been canceled. April 6th and 7th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida at Rock Brothers Brewing. April 20th and 21st, Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. And that is uh, somewhere in Jersey. June 15th and 16th, I'll be at Yuck Yucks in Calgary. And that's Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Also, I want to tell you who's listening to the podcast. I got this message that came in. It said, good evening from Maine. And I went to Maine one time and killed a bat, killed a, a bat with a tennis racket one time when I was trying to touch a girl's vagina for the first time in an abandoned attic. And that's true. Good evening from Maine. I'm a lobster boat captain and I have an audio system set up on my boat for my crew and I to listen to music while we tend our lobster traps. But now we use the audio system to catch up on this past weekend. Keep up the good work and congrats on the new studio. Best regards, Captain Nick Peralt, FV Invictus, Jonesport, Maine. And man, that's a good, uh, that's nice. Thank you guys for checking it out, man. And thank you guys for being out there catching lobsters. Because you know what I'm saying? Like... I grew up in shrimp country. You know, I grew up where they had those little mounds out. You know, they had these little castles outside of the ditch. And inside of those, you could find a shrimp, a crawfish. You know? And a crawfish is just a violent fucking shrimp. A crawfish is just a shrimp that's been to prison. You know, a crawfish is just a... I mean, a crawfish is... You give a shrimp a sword, a helmet, a battle axe, and a dirty, dancy tail. Bang. That's a crawfish. And a crawfish will beat the F out of a shrimp and beat the U and the C and the K out of shrimp. A crawfish is everything, all right? It's a damn Lannister. And a crawfish, and it's crawfish season right now, actually. So get out there and get that hitter, you know, if, you, if you're in a place where you can eat them. But they had these little castles in the ditch with a hole in it, and the crawfish would get in there, and you could get out there. And it was like your first time you'd ever go catch something. You know, people would put a little piece of ham or something on this line and put it down that hole. And wait till that crawdad latched onto it and pull it up. But that was our lobster. If you got a fat crawfish, that was them land lobsters, you know, Captain Peralt. And so if you guys are out there hunting lobsters, dude, more power to you. Get out there and get them. You know, I heard a story one time um, about a lobster that uh, my buddy found, said they caught a lobster and had a pearl in it. Had a pearl in it from... You know, I guess sand had got into its body somehow the same way it gets into a oyster. And this lobster had a pearl. And he started doing this whole thing. He was thinking lobster pearls, you know, is going to be the next big thing. So he bought a ton of fucking lobsters and none of the rest of them had pearls in them. So it also could have just been a lobster, you know, that was downstream from a jewelry shop and caught a fucking hit of a bracelet. Um, but I, I know he lost a, uh, a bunch of money doing that. And I probably shouldn't have said that, Tim, if you listen to this, I'm sorry too, bud. Anyhow, thank you guys for listening. Captain Peralt out there. A couple YouTube shout outs, man. Christy Garcia. She said, I forgot my headphones at home. And because I have to listen to you, guess who left work and went to the gas station for headphones? Gang, gang. You said Brendan is an Instagram model. I did. And he is Brendan Shaw. Another guy, Crow's Nest, 89. The ultimate con man, TFATK, new new studio looks simple as fuck. Though you know when Tom Sawyer had to paint the fence, but he schemed those other dudes into thinking it was fun, you just did that with their studio. Bro, let me get this studio and y'all, this spacious ass shithole right here. 
You're awesome. Keep us laughing. Thank you guys for that. Thank you guys for checking in on that stuff. Um, we're going to get into some calls, but first I want to tell you Starflow, the location for fans trying to link up and get closer to their favorite celebrities. Starflow is a safer ecosystem where your information won't be sold on the black market or other markets. Starflow is a safer ecosystem. It provides a hub for consumers to access their favorite talents and celebrities and exclusive content in seconds. Available on the app or at starflow.com. Starflow stays out of the sell your information secondary market. And it's a safe place where algorithms and sneaky pixels that secretly use your own searches and information to sell you stuff aren't allowed. It's all about users, creators, and content. Check it out in the App Store or at starflow.com. Um, all right, before we get to your calls, I want to check in. Uh, I want to make a call. And this is this young lady smoking cigs. And you guys got to get to know her. I'm trying to get her in the studio. So I figured I'd give her a ring first. Um, her Instagram, to me, I mean, it just is hilarious. She's just one of a kind. She's a rare element. You know, if, say if plutonium were, you know, kind of, you know, finger banging flora, fluorine or whatever. And they secretly had a, you know, they fell in love and had a baby. This baby would be with that rare element. That's who she is right here, smoking cigs. And, um, and Simon Rex turned me on to her, Dirt Nasty. Some of you know him as Dirt Nasty. Uh, but Simon is um, a buddy of mine. He's just a real, I mean, just a genuine hummingbird of talent and humanity. And he turned me on to her, and so I want to reach out to her right now. Let's see what's up with this. Hello? What's up, Sigs? It's Theo. What's cracking? Not much, baby girl. I heard you're headed to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm headed out. Yeah, now when do you touch down here? I'm, I'm touching down tomorrow. You already know. Bad bitch, LA takeover. Uh -oh. or, I don't know, man. I already, I already done. You know how like that one bitch from Bad Girls Club says she runs LA? No, no, bitch. Smoking six, 23, bitch, I run LA. Oh, you got she got competition, huh? Yeah, yeah, she got competition. All right, I mean, you know, like my thing is when I walk up in the room, there, there is no such thing as competition because I already won, you know? Oh, yeah, I've seen you. You're like a little hail, you're like a menthol hailstorm, you know? I've seen, right? I've seen you right. show up. Um, now, I just want to get an update now. Where are you at right now? Where are you at these days? Are you still in I'm Florida? I'm in Miami. Okay. I'm in Miami. Spring break, 2K18. Mm -hmm. Like, you already know what's popping. And what's the big drug right now out there with the kids? Well, I don't know, man. The other day, okay, I went to this one club, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like a corner store, right? It's over in Opalaka, and like so, it's it's just like it looks like a corner store, but they go in the back, and there's like this door, and then they got like a little peephole, and it says like members only and shit, and mm. then you like you know just tell them what's cracking, right? And it's like this like really shitty bar, right? Yeah. And then like you go up to the counter, and they only have like Modelo's and like like vodka cranberries but then they just serve bags of coke and that shit 24 hours that shit is jumping they got one of them jukebox machines you know you put on some kodak black you're living you know what i'm saying i was up in that bitch till motherfucking like midnight till 9 a.m the next day man that shit was cracking oh i can feel that tell me now tell me that they got a daycare in there i know they got a daycare up in that oh joint. they 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 definitely do they yeah. definitely do something <laughs> I love it now. So what what are you what are you doing out here in Los Angeles? I know that you and Simon Rex are buddies, and you guys are out here, um, you know, trying to what what are you guys up to? Well, I got I got a TV, uh, this is a, you know company Jukin Media. Mm -hmm. We made a TV show, and uh, it's about me, you know, doing like uh, bougie LA shit, mm -hmm. and uh, we about to sell that shit. We already met with MTV VH1. We meeting up with Viceland. I think we going to Complex. We going to. Uh, that Verizon shit. Everywhere. Network, all that shit. Smith we, and Wesson. Sponsored by Smith and Wesson, baby. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, you know, it was like, it, it, one of them is finna buy, you know, like I was telling you earlier, I don't care who I got to extort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, someone's gonna buy this shit. Buy, in these motherfucking three days when I'm there, I'm gonna be pissed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a motherfucking family to feed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I'm hungry out here. No, I, I need that. I need that TV check. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, look, I think you deserve it. I mean, you're definitely one of the wildest cats that I've ever seen. You know for sure. Um, right. Right. Now, what kind of? I got to ask you, what kind of dude slide in your it slide into your DMs? Because you're a specific. Oh man, I got SoundCloud rappers all up in my DMs. Really? I got I got motherfucking weird ass motherfuckers all up in my DMs on the daily. They be like, what them sick puffin' lips do? You know what I'm saying? Ooh. I mean, everybody be sliding up in these DMs. A lot, lot of brothers. A lot of brothers, huh? Yeah, he, yeah, a lot of brothers. A lot of brothers. You know, here's my thing. Don't be sliding up in my DMs unless you got that verified sign. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Because I ain't mean up with you 
unless you got that verified sign or you got a record deal that's about to get you that verified sign. You know what I'm saying? Like, gang, gang, girl. You SoundCloud rappers. Mm -mm. No, yeah. unless you got that verified sign. You need somebody call. real. I need, I need at least one million total views up on your SoundCloud before you can slide up into these DMs. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But I guess you got to aim high. Now, where did you get that? Like, where did you get that desire to aim high? Like, where did that start for you? Uh, I mean, I always knew I was the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, bad bitch like me, you know, we can't, I can't, I can't be just be being seen with anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do know that. And do you have a man these days or what's up? No, not right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm solo dolo. You know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Mr. Wright to come around. You know what I mean? He, he got to have money though, you know? Mm-hmm. And are you, you giving, like, if a man comes along and you, do you do the one night stand kind of thing? Will you drop a blow job on a fella if he deserves it or what? Oh, unless unless he got that cash app, unless he got that PayPal, unless he got that motherfucking all that on deck, don't 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 be coming towards me. You know what I'm saying, yeah. bitch? You best take me to Applebee's, and you must motherfucking take me to TGIF Friday for dessert. Damn. Before you, up there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you switching venues? You switching venues? Right. That's what I'm saying. We switching venues up in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, 100%. Now, what's up? Like, uh, like when I was growing up, they had a lot of haters and everything out there. They still Is it still pretty hater-specific out there? Is oh, this... yeah. Haters everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Haters everywhere. They're all jealous of me. Yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? The haters, they're just, they're just people who are jealous because, in reality, everybody loves me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got I got fan base. I got fan base in Australia. I got fan base in Europe. I got fan base in the Taliban, Afghanistan. They'll all be loving the Siggies. The gays love me. The goths love me. The, the freaks love me. The hipsters love me. They all fucking love me. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Well, I love you, and I appreciate you uh, I appreciate you jump, jumping on the line with us. You got to um, you gotta come in studio next time you come in. If, if you can't make Hell it in yeah. this week, then next time. Hell yeah. I'm about it. All right. Well, look, fly safe, and I'll see you with Simon. We're going to all grab lunch. Hell yeah. Just holler at me. All right, babe. Be good. All right. You too. All right. Deuces, bro. Bye. And that's Sigs, man. Look, you can follow her on Instagram. Some of y'all are listening right now, and you'd be like, that, you know, she's, f that thing, you know, you know, whatever. Her voice is all over the place. She's wild. Dude, I'm telling you, go to her Instagram. It is smoking, S-M-O-K-I-N-C-I-G-S, 23. And, I mean, she should be brought to you by Percocet, okay? Because she is, um, I mean, as Simon Rex introduced her to me, and he said, man, she's like the realest one you'll ever meet. And she is fucking, I mean, she's, she's a, I mean, I would love to see her like in a UFC fight or something. Because she'll lose, but you know that shit would be good, boy. You know that shit would be good. Just the weigh-in alone would be better uh, than half the fights that are out there. All right, let's get to some of you guys' calls uh, that came in right here, here on the hotline. Here we go. Hey, Theo, man. It's your boy, Justin from Jersey. Justin from Jersey. Dude, I'll tell you this. So I was in Clifton one time, and that's a place in New Jersey, right? I was in Clifton, New Jersey, and this girl, I was at Joey's. I don't know if anybody remembers nightclub. This nightclub in Joey's, they had, spread, they had tanning beds by the front door when you went in. They had three beds, dude, and they had people in there tanning. Some people just go there to tan. Other people are dancing. Some people are fucking, one person's giving birth to a baby that's also tanning. The baby's tanning. Um, so just a crazy place, man. They spray everybody down with banana lotion like halfway through the dance night. It's insane. Uh, and I met this girl, this beautiful Italian girl. I mean, bro, you could eat fucking, I mean, you'd clean skin. I mean, you'd fucking suck marinara out of her ear holes, you know, stunning. And so she, you know, we we were flirting, and I was drinking, man. I would, I was drinking, and I was lit up, and I was, you know, she was letting me touch her, you know, kind of touch her butt and touch her, you know, breasts a little bit in the club, you know, over the shirt. And then she let me touch her friend's butt, which I thought, and her friend was, you know, cool with that. And so I thought that was fucking awesome, you know, like I'm touching her butt, and then she's like, "Hey, touch my friend's butt," and I'm like, "Yeah." Dang, there's four cheeks out here for daddy, boy. You know, it's like just playing the bongos out here. Anyway, she takes me home over here in New Jersey. She takes me back to her mother's house or wherever she lives. I don't know. I was, I was lit up. It's like a 40-minute drive. And this is back when you could drunk drive. And we, so we get there, man. I remember she and I, we got into the basement. And the basement was like an L-shaped basement. 
So we get into the basement. It's like an L shape. And I don't know. I can't even remember if we hooked up or whatever in this bed down there. There was a bed in the, in the, in the corner of the L shape. You know, the basement kind of goes one way. And then there's a, you know, it's an L. Makes an L. And in that corner where the two legs met, there was a bed. And so I get in that bed, I fell asleep or whatever. In the morning, I wake up and on one side, I hear like a, this, sound like a lawnmower, sound like a, like a kind of a gay lawnmower. And it's a hairdryer. Somebody's running a hairdryer, like two hairdryers. There's somebody running a salon in the corner of the basement, right? So I'm like, holy shit, like who are these people? Then uh, the other corner of the basement, there's a Bible study going on. Um, there's just like a, there's like four or five kids sitting around doing a Bible study. And I'm just like, Jesus, boy, this is about as, you know, hit me with a, you know, a couple, um, a couple hundred milligrams of test 200 milliliters of test 200 and some wind straw. And this is about the most New Jersey experience you could have. But that was something that happened, man. I woke up in that L shape, you know, and that's, that's basically the Lord saying, look, it's time to braid your spirit. You know, it's time to cornrow your soul a little bit and get right. But uh, but that was a good time that I had out there in Jersey. But thank you for calling, Justin. Onward. The reason I'm calling is that I wanted to know your opinion and your stance, your your whole, you know, your idea of marijuana and cannabis and the industry and legalization and all that because I'm very passionate about it. Um, it's helped over a drug addiction of mine. I used to be addicted to Xanax and it's really helped me uh, maintain a productive lifestyle and be a better person. Okay, cool. Uh, my opinions on weed, yeah. Look, if weed works for you, that's fine. You know, right now I'm sober, so I can't do uh, marijuana. I mean, I can if I want to, but I'm choosing not to at this point. Um, and will that change? It might change, you know. Uh, but for right now, you know, it hasn't worked for me in the past. Now, it also might have, weed might have refined itself into a better position. But I get that anxiety, boy. I get, you know, I turn into, you know, that spooky boy. I turn into that dude who's playing hide and go seek by himself, you know, in the house at a small dinner party. That guy, you know, that guy just runs up to you out of the blue and is like, hey, go count, go count. You know, that guy. So I don't, I don't handle it well. But, I am, I think, you know, we're headed in a huge direction for more natural medicine. Um, I think it's a scary time out there. There's a lot of companies coming out with fake stuff and not good products. But I think you just got to find one that you trust and one that you know is good. But yeah, these CBD oils and all of that kind of stuff, you know, I consider getting into those types of things and figuring out more about that. Um, and I'm open to it, man. You know, I think... I think the only reason that we've only had the certain drugs that we've had is because science, uh, the government, you know, probably has had better control over them. You know, and the government's had taxes in place out of the gate. So, yeah, I'm all for more. I wish they would come out with like neater drugs, you know, some of these natural drugs. But now I do think that if you, that drug abuse is a real thing. And if you ain't doing, if you got dreams, but you ain't doing shit. You know, sometimes drugs don't help that, you know, or if you got, you know, things you want to do and you, you know, you just, you know, if you always, if your first excuse is to go get high, then maybe that's not it. But fuck, you know, these mushrooms expanding people's minds and helping people see a softer side of the world. And I'm all for that, man. I think there's a lot of exploration that needs to be done out there. And I'm glad that we're, that there's a lot of people getting into it. And we're getting back to a lot of more natural stuff. So you don't need these pharmacies to go, you know, to go to that shit and get that bullshit. You know, you can beat it. And it's nice to hear that, you know, you were on a pharmaceutical and now you're on um, something natural, something from the earth. And that's beautiful because that seems like a way more comfortable thing to be associating with your body. You know, something that's, um, you know, that's just, that's more of nature. Not this, you know, this shit out there, these... You know, people out here on hydroxycodone and hydroxycut, you know, people do, you know, it's scary. Very scary, man. And drug addiction and that kind of stuff has been heavy in my family and it's scary. And it's a scary world. And anybody that's struggling with that kind of stuff, you feel free to hit the hotline 985-664-9503. 
you know, I'm not licensed. I don't know anything like that. But, um, but I, you know, I'd love to hear from you. I just don't want you to feel alone if you're having a tough time with something like that. But thanks for calling, Justin. You know, and it's nice to know that there are people out there like you who are advocates and who are pushing hard. You know, and I watch some of these guys. I watch them feel good and I watch them, you know, I think you have to be able to find what works for you. And it seemed like you found that. And if you're in a comfortable space for you, then that's awesome, brother. All right, let's get another call here. Here we go. What up, Theo? This is Ira down in Phoenix, Arizona. Ira, what's up, brother? I think it's, is it a, could be German maybe, could be Hebrew. Um, IRA, that's also a, you know, it's a good place. If you guys don't have one open, you can open one up and hide some of your money there if you have an S-Corp. So I think you or you don't even have to have that. I think you just have a regular, you have to be a human with a social security number and you can put some money away, a nice place of savings. And I know that's probably a bad joke that people tell you all the time, Ira, and I didn't mean to just delve into that, but it reminded me that I got to finish my taxes. Let's hear more. So I got this dilemma with my wife. She, you know, put this dress on the other day and she's a petite little thing, you know, 130 pounds, sopping wet, maybe. Okay, you got a petite thing in a dress, boy, already. I'm interested. <laughs> Let's hear more. And she put this dress on the other day. She's got a wedding coming up this Friday, and it's a little tighter on the midsection, you know? So she had a little donut popping out. Okay, so she got that little donut out front. And I some of them, I like that. I like that little front hump. You know, I like that lady that got that soft batch blowing out the front. You know, she got that center... You know, she got that soft that that soft center. I like that, man. All right, let's hear more. And ever since then, she's been on this ketosis diet. But the first thing to go are the fun bags and the butt jugglers. You know, so I don't really know what to do. Should I keep supporting her to get skinny, or should I tell her to plump back up a little bit? Okay, so you're saying your lady's on that ketosis. And that sounds like the dark arts to me, boy. Ketosis, dude? I mean, I'm guessing not for cancer. I would say, look, man, there's better, there's easier ways probably to lose weight than, you know, doing, you know, stuff like that. You know, doing it, you know, heavy treatments. I mean, cancer drugs, that kind of, that kind of stuff is, that's for cancer, dude. And to be, you know, to be using, you should probably talk to a medical medical professional because to be using that kind of stuff to lose weight fucking just run or something you know but the second part of that that losing weight sometimes you lose them tits you you lose them butt jugglers yeah well you can't have it all man you know if you want that you know that thick stick then you gotta enjoy that i mean look some of these skinny ladies it's like making love to a to a bag of uh to a pillowcase full of deer antlers so you know what I'm saying? They get too lean. It's like you're out there, you know, just trying to weave through a wood pile with a dick. So you want a lady that's got a little bit of heat on her. You know, you want a little bit of lady that's got a little bit of rib meat and even a little bit of leg meat on her ribs. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, the biggest thing is just getting in that mood, putting on a couple candles, putting on some, um, you know, I used to, I used to honestly, bro, I used to listen to NBA jams a lot when I would fuck a little bit. That Ahmad Rashad, I put that shit on, bro. Something about those dunks and Sean Kemp and all that shit made me want to fuck. But I, you know, you got to just, that's the thing. You got to get it, you know, you got to get comfortable in there. So I think whatever you're doing, get comfortable. Bring them lights down. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, you know, and just tell your girl you're lover. She don't need to be out doing all that kind of shit. I mean, that's like cutting your leg off to lose weight. You know, you're going to lose 30 pounds, but you're not going to have a leg. You're going to be fucking hopping to work, you know? So it's, that's hit or miss, man. Let's take another call or two. Here we go. This past Thursday, I got kicked out of my mom's and her husband's house. I've uh, been just staying at these damn hotels and hotels, two different hotels this past weekend. Okay, so this past weekend, this guy's calling in about this past weekend, and we said if people wanted to call in and tell us what their weekend was like, if it was good or bad, that uh, at the end of the month, each month, we would do a contest, and we would send you one of these shirts, and I don't have it right here in front of me, but we, we got these straight up, these correctional blue, these correctional center blue hitters, and we'll mail one out to you, whoever has had the best or worst weekend. So you need to leave, me a, leave us a message on the hotline, 985-664-9503. And we'll send you one, uh, whoever wins. And um, this, I believe, is our first entry of it. 
and you just leave that message, and uh, here we go. And so uh, yesterday, last night, I had the homie come through, burn some trees a little bit at the hotel, and then he decides he wants to go see Black Panther. I- okay, so you got you and your boy, uh, you got kicked out of the house, and now you're at the hotel motel, you're living on your own, and your boy came through to burn a little bit of green. Go. I already saw it, but I loved it, so I was like, all right, let's go. Was- and you're going to see Black Panther two times, so you're definitely not racist, so that's impressive. Onward. I was pumped, high as fuck. We leave, and my dumb ass starts speeding about almost 20 over. Uh, I think it was a little less, but they always want to say it was more. He smelled- they always want to tell you it was more, man. They always want to tell you it was more. One time, this man pulled me over, and this girl that had gotten in the car, and she wouldn't shut up, and I was yelling at her, you know? And the man pulled me over. He's like, you, 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 know, you were swerving back there. Why were you doing that? And I said, because this bitch wouldn't shut it down. This one right here, sir. Fucking Margaret right here, Margaret. And he and he looked, bro, and he's like, I feel you, man, and that was it. Dude, let me off. True story. But onward, bro, you got pulled over? I was weed. Apparently these cops uh, are starting to change their minds. He said, we're not arresting people anymore for little, you know, dime bags and joints. I told him there's nothing in the car because I really thought there wasn't. So he ends up taking us out, searching us, searching the car, finds a joint. Luckily, he's still cool about it, tells me to stomp it out, and he sends us on our way after about an hour and a half. Not to mention, I had told a girl to meet me at the movie theater, but uh, it had already been like an hour and a half into the movie by the time we were done, so I could tell just over text, barely replying, she didn't respond to my call, so uh, it's, been a, uh, it's been a pretty rough weekend. Okay, that sounds like a rough weekend. You got pulled over by the cops, you know, you were going, you were speeding, you invited a girl to the movies and you didn't show up, your parents kicked you out the house. Man, that sounds shitty, bro, and also sounds like you got to get more organized, man. You got to get on your shit. You know, you got to get on your shit, man. I can already, you know, I'm jumping to conclusions here, but you seem like a, just a white dude that's not being on his shit. And you need to get on it. Your step parents, you living with the family, bro. Tighten up. Okay? Get up 45 minutes earlier. Help out around the house. Be a part of the solution at your house, dude. If you out there blowing them, blowing, getting high, and you busting up on that grass, and lunging up on that greenery, then at least fucking drive the speed limit. All right? We don't need a fucking, you know, we don't need some dude that's, you know, hopped up on all of this shit out there, you know, playing Mario Kart out there. So, you know what I'm saying? Ride the speed limit. You got a friend in the car and you out there, you know, being wild and throwing banana peels at the, out the window and fucking trying to fucking, you know, you know, trying to bump into the princess. Get it together, man. And then the last part, you invited a girl to the movie and, sh- and, you know, that kind of shit happens, bro. You know, I would call her and I would just explain to her what happened. Call her. Explain to her what happened. Say, look, I fucked up. You know, I'm getting high too much. You know, I'm not taking care of my shit. My parents threw me out. I'm living at motels. I'm blowing trees over at a motel and speeding and missing dates. You know, you got it, man. I, but I love you, dude. That's the crazy part, bro. I fucking love you, dude. I really do. Because I've been you. I've been there. I've been there, man. I think, anyway. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. I made some poor choices, dude. But if you're young, man, just have, you know, then just, you know, just hold it together. Just don't, 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 you know, take care of yourself. That's the main thing. Just take care of yourself. Get things in a little more moderation. That's what I mean. Get yourself in a comfortable spot. Go make it up to that lady. You know, maybe she, if she showed up, go make it up to her. You know, just take, you know, take a little bit of responsibility. And you know what will follow after that? A little bit more. But you'll start to want it, bro. You'll start, you'll start, you'll start to get a taste for that. You got to get a little bit of hit of that responsibility on your tongue. I know you can do it, man. You got this shit. What else, man? This call came in. I'll play this thing. Hey, yo, Vaughn. Noel from Los Angeles. This is Noel from Los Angeles, and I've never met anybody named Noel. More? I got real excited when you started saying, fuck them, fuck them, trying to hold you down. And uh, I completely agree. But this year, or whatever it is, this is the flavor of the year. This is people's flavor. Right now what they got going on is people's flavor, not a poor white kid from Louisiana or 
you know, a 34-year-old white kid from the south side of Chicago. But we're just going to keep refining our tools. We're going to keep coming. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep doing what we do because we're not going to let some fucking punk-ass motherfuckers hold us from our dreams. I'm with you, brother. I think you're the fucking funniest guy out there behind Sebastian. And uh, I just uh, I love you, and I appreciate everything that you do. Thanks, Noel. I appreciate it, man. You know, and... um. Yeah, and this goes for, look, it's not because we're, you know, Noel said, he said he's a white guy. It's not because, you know, he's a white guy, I'm a white guy. You know, it's just anything. I, you know, it just, if anything, this, a lot of this experience has made me feel like what it's like to not feel uh, welcome. And that sucks, man. You know, it sucks not feeling welcome. But the problem is where I can, where I can mess up is when I start to act like I'm not welcome. Because when I start to act like I'm not welcome, that's when I'm not taking care of myself. So if, if some places or people don't want to take care of me, they don't want to make me feel welcome because of where I'm from or the way I sound or the way that I look, then that's their choice. But if I start to let that live in me in a negative way, then that's my choice. So man, I really can, you know, and this, in some ways, this is some. This is a unique way that I've ever related to people who have not been allowed something because of their, or felt like they weren't allowed something because of their, um, because of their skin or their voice or their, um, where they're from. And I'm not comparing this to any other anybody else's walk in this universe. I'm not comparing this, but I'm, but I am sharing what what is what's happening for me because that's what's real to me. You know. And, it, you know, it is. It's wild, man. It makes me, it, you know, it definitely teaches me a lot about, you know, I mean, I can empathize now. I can empathize when people say, man, you know, I don't feel welcome. I don't feel like these people want me. Like, they don't accept me. You know? But, I, I you know, I, I hope that we all get back to a day where it's just all, all that it's about is who's the most entertaining. And I think that's what comedy's always been, usually. And a lot of times it ain't the people that's getting this show or this or that. Man, that's who they want. But I think these days we live in a world where people are finding out, you know, who is out there putting in the work and who is out there doing what's good. Um, and that's it, man. That's I think that, 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 that's it for today. That's it for today. You know, uh, we'll probably be back with a Thursday episode. We got the new studio coming along. We got a couple guests booked. I don't think it's going to happen this week, but I don't know. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, some cool stuff, man. I want to thank everybody who helps out on Patreon. We, uh, we now have two cameras. We got another mic um, that just came in. Cool stuff happening. A lot of cool stuff happening, and a lot of it's all thanks to you guys. I cannot thank you. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. I want to thank Gray Block Pizza for their support. I'll s excuse me. I'll see you guys in Tacoma at the Comedy Club this weekend. Uh, I want to thank everybody that called in for everybody's thoughts. Um, I want to, another shout out to Justin last week who called in. His brother had passed away, man. Uh, still thinking about you, you know, and still... Um, you know, I just appreciate you sharing that with us because it's, you know, it's moments like that that are real. It's moments like that that are really, really, really real and really put things into perspective. And I hope that, uh, you know, that you're finding some peace in your heart, bro. I really do. Um, that's it, man. That's all we got today. Be good to yourselves. You probably deserve it. I'm going to take you out with some of that original hit that we had. And that is uh, Spencer Jacob Growl with Celebrate. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys, man, for being here with me. I appreciate it. I really do. Celebrate living. Celebrate misery. You know that soon we're gonna die. Let's have some fun while we all die. Celebrate dark days Celebrate all your pain All of your demons exercised Let's have some fun while we all die Be 
good to yourselves, man. You probably deserve it.